Bishop, we understand that everything is measurable. So if you could measure the American church's cultural impact today on a scale from one to 10, what would it be and why? Um, one thing I would say, let me preface my statement by saying that it was certainly a declining and um, six, something like that. And the reason that it is declining is because we have been so introspective mm. that we failed to engage the culture and maintain our relevance. I think many times we're using an old model in a contemporary world, and uh, that model just being built around come to church instead of going into all the world and all the world systems and all the world industries where we can have real influence. Mm -hmm. So uh, what are your suggestions as far as how to engage that? I mean, how can the, can the church a large branch out to have more of an impact? Well, the early church did it by going to Ephesus and they took over the economic systems when Paul went to Ephesus. They, they went to Gre Greece and they took over the language. They went to Rome and they took over the government. Uh, when they went to Greece, they were able to infuse uh, the Christian message into the arts. And all of a sudden, we have all of the Sistine Chapel and we have all of these beautiful paintings that are derivative of them hitting pulse points that affect the culture. It's not necessarily geographical locations. It's for us, it might be social media, it might be movies, it might be television, it might be Wall Street, it might be politics. Uh, we have withdrawn from the culture and we left them to engage in a conversation without us and uh, there's been a deterioration because of it. Basically saying being, being involved in all aspects of it. So media, arts, uh, sports, just being being in, engulfed in the culture. Engaged in the culture. Uh, if we are the salt of the earth, we have to get out of the shaker, <laughs> you know. And so, but we have a come to us mentality, you know. And like uh, the church is not a business, but if we were a business, any business that had the come to us mentality is losing business right now. Because now people are shopping on the internet, they're logging on, and people are not necessarily coming to you. You have to go to them. Mm. When we're talking about disconnect. Um, there seems to be a disconnect between faith and everyday life, and particularly with the younger generation. Mm -hmm. um, so how can you engage with them? I think it's very, very important that we uh, speak in their language. <laughs> you know, uh, the great thing about Pentecost is each man heard them speak in their own language, and uh, that spiritual phenomenon can also be a marketing tool. We have to speak in the language of the generation. We have to speak in the language of the culture. We have to recognize that they have their own culture and their own way of communicating, and whether it's in uh, 140 characters or what, we we gotta be on Twitter, we gotta be on Facebook, we yeah. gotta be on Instagram, we gotta be on everything that they're on and engage them in a way that they can relate to. Mm -hmm. And the last thought is this, um, out of all the things that you've done, you know, the movies, the TV shows, the ministries, um, at the end of the day, what do you think you'll be known for, like, like your legacy? <laughs> I, I don't know. That's yet to be <laughs> said. <laughs> you know, I could get into a lot of trouble in the next 10 years doing what my thing. You know, I've always been out of the box. Uh -huh. You know, I didn't play by the rules. I was my own person. I did not allow people to define who I was. I was my own person. I explored business. I explored movies. I explored the, everything. And I'm called to the ministry, but not confined right. by the ministry. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I, I, think, I think amongst the people that knew me, I would like to be known as a friend. Mm. Good. I don't think that there is any higher honor than to really be a friend to the people that know you. To the people that don't know you, I would like to be known for inspiring them, whether in movies, books, television, pulpit, whatever. I'm an uplifting person. I'm a you-can-do-it sort of guy, and I spent my life trying to convince broken people that they could walk again. Okay. Bishop, thank you so much for taking time. Real pleasure. Great. So that was Bishop T.D. Jakes. Now remember, for more exclusive interviews like this one, all you have to do is log on to cbn.com slash in the green room. I'm Caleb Kinchlow, and remember, after the lights, camera, and action, log on to the green room. Sounds good. Thank you, sir. Not a problem. Thank you. Thank you.